Howdy, everybody, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch podcast. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm your host. With me this week are my fantastic co-hosts, Liz Harper and Joe Perez. Uh, give it up for those guys. And there's no actual studio audience here, so you can't hear the clapping. <laughs> but just imagine it. Imagine people going, yeah, Liz, well, yeah, Joe. Um, but, I mean, yeah. I could start putting canned responses in here. I can do that. I can edit it yeah. in. It just adds more time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't want to ask you to actually do that because it is a lark. One of these episodes, I will, and everybody will either love me or hate me. One or the other. But uh, yeah, we we've, we've got some stuff to talk about. Blizzard Watch is the podcast where we talk about Blizzard and other video games. But we started off talking about Blizzard, so we're gonna continue that for now. Um, so stuff has been happening. Uh, D- one of the things that Liz actually pointed out that I had forgotten entirely was that we thought by now Diablo 3's season was going to be ending this weekend. Uh, season yeah. 25 because the PTR came out and usually that's how things run around, but we haven't had any announcement and they, they announce it two weeks in advance. They always say, Hey, this is happening in two weeks. So uh, without an announcement saying it's going to be happening next week, uh, the new, the new uh, season, there's, there's no way it's ending this weekend. So we're in that limbo place again, where the season could end up longer than it, than it was going to be. Stuff could happen. We don't know right now. Um, but that's the, the state of it. The, 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 the season 26 is on the PTR. Uh, it's being tested. They, they're still working on it. We don't know when that's coming out. But I mention this because it gives me a good segue into the fact that patch mm-hmm. 9.2.5 files have now hit the PTR mm-hmm. for World of Warcraft. Um, Liz also mentioned this. So uh, Liz does this great thing where she, she breaks down the news so I don't have to. And it's really amazing. And I'm like, I'm a big That's fan because of it. Liz has editor power. She sees everything. Yeah. 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 See, the problem is I'm always in the news to assign posts and to make sure things are happening on the site. So yeah, I no, don't it's... know that I see everything, but I have, I have eyes everywhere. So yeah, either, either she's like Odin and she traded her eye to like evil or, <laughs> or she's just sitting on Hamdahl's throne. But regardless, um, that the PTR, the thing for patch 9.2.5, we, we don't actually know a ton about what's coming. We know some stuff's coming. They talked about the, the, the Horde Alliance players being able to group together thing was supposed to be in 9.2.5. Yeah. Uh, no idea how far along that is in, at this point, like how well that will be testable. But I think it's pretty cool, quite frankly. Uh, I think it's one of the better things they've ever done. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and... Uh, I okay. also wanted to point out that we're currently in the second week of Mythic uh, yep. progression on the, the final raid on the Sepulchre of the First Ones. And I said Sepulchre instead of Sanctum for once. Oh, my God. I keep calling it Sanctum of the First Ones. Anyway, Close enough. S- second week, and I believe Echo killed Rigalon for World First Rigalon, which puts them on the Jailer. Yes. Uh, I don't think anybody else is on the Jailer yet. Are they? Or Lim- are some yes? Liquid. Liquid has uh, followed along, and uh, I think they got Rigalon a day after Echo. All right. So, so we, we now have two guilds, guilds currently working on, on th- the Jailer. Uh, Chad is mentioning third now for the U.S. Is there another another group that's on there? Might be. I don't know. Uh, Things sure. change quickly. Think, yeah. Th- this this is a Warcraft minute. This is- Log. Go ahead. Warcraft hmm? Logs disagrees. Warcraft Logs says no one else. Oh, third week. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> you know, it's it's been two weeks and now we're in the third week. Yeah. I'm sorry if I said that poorly. Uh, 14 days or so when it took Ragalon about 14 days to die. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's happening. I'm interested only because like, this was the season where this was the raid where they took the first day and they just did heroic splits. Everybody did this to get as many people as possible in tier, uh, which showed like not, it wasn't just because everybody missed tier and thought tier was their friend. It was because tier gave, gives you incredible power bonuses. It, it, it's really a game changer for anybody who gets it. So they wanted to make sure everybody had tier going into mythic. So they did a ton of heroic splits and they even did normals yeah, to I get, think. to get pieces to, to finish those, up. Those set bonuses are just so powerful. They had to, to yeah. be competitive, really on time. Liz and I learned so, that one last night, didn't we, Liz? Oh, uh, it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's going around. Um, we should talk about last week when we talked about it. We weren't. We were not uh, actually given the name of the new expansion for Hearthstone yet. They were supposed to be on the fifteenth, which was been the day I think the day after we ran, but we didn't get to do it. They they then announced it on the seventeenth. We now we now know it's called. Uh, I want to say the you know voyage to the sunken city. Voyage to the sunken city, indeed. 
Yeah. So you got it. Yeah, Liz. What? It, what is this? Because I, I am straight up. I didn't. I read the thing, and I'm still confused. <laughs> What's going on with this expansion? Uh, well, I mean, every Hearthstone expansion follows the same basic pattern. You get 135 new cards, and everything everything changes. When you add new cards, you'll always see new decks come up because new cards make different things possible. And so that's just always really interesting. It's an interesting time. Um, but so, yeah, kind of the theme is like underwater. And uh, we're getting Naga cards are going to be a new minion type. So we got a lot of Naga coming into this. And they also have a really cool thing called a Colossal Minion, which is like a minion that's so big, it's across multiple cards. So like you might summon like a giant sea monster as a minion, and then you can summon like tentacle arms for the sea monsters. And that's like different minions. So it becomes like kind of a, a Voltron super minion made up of different pieces. Uh, so I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Because it sounds like a kind of play that's going to be really slow. Like you have to collect pieces and some other things. And uh, sometimes Hearthstone can move like one turn kill deck. So just we'll see how this goes. It sounds really interesting and fun. I'm pretty excited. You just reminded me of Pokemon Sword and Shield with the Dynamax Pokemon. <laughs> That's the, that's the first thing I thought of when you said that. And then you talked about how it's like Voltron. I'm like, oh my god. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that's interesting. The idea that you are you could literally be playing a deck that's based around the various aspects of this giant monster you just summoned. So that's pretty cool. And it, yeah. it also has a new keyword called Reg, which basically does something to the cards at the bottom of the deck. So like instead of just like drawing a card, you might like see a card at the bottom of the deck or put cards at the bottom of the deck deck or you know just move things like it dredge basically lets you do weird things that rearrange your you might put a card down there take a card out of there uh, things like that so that that's going to be an interesting new way to change up the dynamics of decks but we'll see like all of these things they announce it and then you have to see how it really plays so that is coming out next and we still have uh the not the next world of warcraft uh, announcement is coming out in april right uh yes, I believe so. So the nineteenth. We'll, yeah, nineteenth. Last I think. I heard was April nineteenth. Yeah. So we got that going on. Speaking of things coming out fairly soon, um, Christy Golden's Sylvanas novel is coming out this month at the end of this month on the 29th. Uh, I honestly, this was originally supposed to come out last year. Um, I don't remember if it was November. But I think it was last November, and then they pushed it back to March, and. It feels like it would have been weird if this had come out when it did, when, you know, if when it was originally supposed to, because the, the raid didn't come out, you know, the Zerith Mortis wouldn't have been out by then. So that would have been odd. So I, but I don't know. Um, how many fights have you guys seen in, in uh, Sepulchre, the first ones? Like, which, how many, like, bosses have you actually gotten up to? We have attempted all of them. We've cleared everything up to Anduin. Okay. So you haven't seen the Anduin end of fight cinematic yet? N- I have, but that's because I saw it outside of game, but in game, we haven't seen it. I don't know if Liz has or hasn't. Yeah, I've seen it. So I think that that is going to make the book interesting, Uh, but I'm I'm waiting to see, you know, getting getting time to read the book has been kind of an issue. Um, I I just was wondering what you guys think about having Sylvanas' novel come out now, having it be at the end of, of Shadowlands. What does it make you think about what the future of the game going forward? Anything you want to talk about before we move on, because... I feel like we didn't really hadn't really seen a book like this in a long time because usually what we get is a big next expansion novel. And this is very much a, this expansion novel, if that makes sense. So I'm going to, I'm just going to point at Liz, Liz, you, you, anything? <laughs> uh, you, you're asking the non lore person to have a lore conversation. Really? I don't think it's uh, really a lore conversation though, because it's not necessarily about what the story of the book is, but just about the timing of it. Uh, well, I think it is pretty, obvious that the book had some tie-ins to where the story was going and maybe it would not have been appropriate to release this cinematic maybe there are things they can it can talk about and explore that it couldn't have done early so um yeah i just feel like that's the time because it it must tie into something joe i have nothing else to really add right now okay yeah, um, come back when we do the next lore watch because I'm sure at some point. We will yeah, th- we have a lot of like spoilery stuff that we need to need to chat at. <laughs> so, 
But at this point, um, we've done the thing we usually don't do, and we've blazed through the stories pretty fast. <laughs> uh, usually, we take more time with them, but this week there were fewer, and we they, you know, we we went through most of them. So we're going to move on to questions and such. If you've got a question for the show, uh, please send it to our email address, which is podcast at blizzardwatch.com with the subject line podcast or Blizzard Watch, so we know it's for the show. Um, if you don't like using email, um, you know, young, you, you younger folks today with your phones, you just yearn all about the Snapchats <laughs> or whatever. Uh, I, I need to sound old every so often because, well, I, I am an ancient horrible creature for the sea. The, in fact, the new Hearthstone expansion is about the sunken city that I escaped from. Anyway, <laughs> if you don't want to use email or, you know, you just, you know, you're on our discord server anyway, and something pops in your head, you can in fact go to our patron Q and podcast questions channel. If you are a patron, we look there first for questions because you guys pay for the site to exist and that we really appreciate that. So that's our way of saying, thanks. You get first crack at questions. Um, but if you don't, if you're not a patron, you you know money's tight. Uh, you just like our stuff, but they're going the way they're going for you. We don't we don't mind. We have a podcast and Q questions channel for you. Uh, you can go in there and ask, and we go in there too. Um, and remember to like let us know what podcast you're asking it for, because at this point we've got three. So it's really helpful if you tell us that hey, this is a question for Tavern Watch. Although to be honest, if you ask like a three paragraph question about role playing games, we'll probably assume it's for Tavern Watch because you know. That's just the way it is. But regardless, if you tell us which show it's for, it's easier for us. Um, I don't have any dice to hand this time. <laughs> so I'm going to just say, why don't you guys, you know, which one of you wants to add, to read the first question? I will. Uh, go for it. Because Liz has been going first the last few weeks. So uh, so this one is from uh, CDC, CTC. Uh, just a short observation. When the Primus says, I will keep the crown close until it is needed again. Focus your efforts on Zoval's defeat. I'm not sure. I trust him that much. We just helped a very powerful being upgrade a very powerful artifact, and he says, I'll keep it safe. Go run off and do something else. Even the other leaders there were a bit worried about what was being created. Stay warm. So I think this is just the latest uh, sort of we don't trust the uh, the Primus uh, that's been going on since the Wowhead article came out, where I believe some people were trying to uh, – there was a case made uh, that there might be some evidence that indicates that maybe the Primus is actually really the jailer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know. I mean, we do a lot of, of trusting of really powerful beings, uh, but also, I mean, if we can take out – Zoval, I'm not too terribly worried about the Primus. I don't know about you guys. What do you I think? I just think we trust a lot of powerful beings, and sometimes mm. we do it without thinking. There have been lots of times, e even just in this expansion, where we're just like, yeah, I trust you, and then we walk along after this people, and oh, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs> We do this all the time. And sometimes it's like you as a player are like, this is a bad guy. This is just so obvious. This is a bad guy. Why am I helping this bad guy? Why does the quest make me help this bad, obvious, obvious bad guy? I like to call then, this the Warlords of Draenor effect. Yeah. <laughs> like the opening of Warlords of Draenor when you find yourself before floating Gul'dan and you're like, he's like, free me. And you're like, why can't I just stop him from, you know, powering the portal by stabbing him repeatedly in the chest. <laughs> that feels like it should be an option. Although then the entire expansion would be warlords of Draenor. Oh, you figured it out. <laughs> okay. You're done. Easy mode. You immediately hit max level. Go raid. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get what you're both saying. I, I, I do understand what you're written down. Yeah, and, but I mean, they also think there. There's always going to be an element of that in anything we do, right? Like, I think that's that's inevitable. We're always going to be trying to make allies or trying to do something, and there's always going to be some some level of mistrust or with it, especially after the cinematic that definitely indicated that this is now even more powerful than the Helm of Domination was to begin with, right? So, like, mm -hmm. it's it's an interesting thing. Yeah, but at the same time, the cinematic also feels like it doesn't do anything like the old thing. Like, it's kind of hard to figure out how a, a helmet that prevents domination is going to be used in an evil scheme. I'm not saying you can't do it, but the whole premise of this thing now is that it fortifies and bolsters willpower. It keeps you from being dominated. It's like, how is this bad exactly? I mean, n and now for my ultimate evil plan, I won't let you control my mind. <laughs> okay. 
I, I can still hit you with a hammer, right? Yeah, absolutely. This thing just keeps you from controlling my mind. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I've still got a hammer. So bang. But yeah, I, I do get what you guys are saying. And I do think, I mean, one of the reasons I actually found uh, in the last expansion in Battle for Azeroth, one of the reasons I found Ashara so refreshing was her. that it, at no point did she make any bones about the fact that, you know, I, you know, I, I'm absolutely going to, gonna like mess you over like when, yeah, when she's everything she did from the beginning she was like you know oh by all means come on in say hi this it's totally what i want and, and then when you when you show up in her fight and she uses you to open the lock she's like well i told you i wanted you to come here what did you think you yeah know? she's she's not evil she's not a liar she's just self-serving and she's very upfront about that like yeah and even when you you see her in nyalotha she's straight up like you know you know go ahead go here's the knife go Go stab away. Go get him. Uh, when you're done, I'll be waiting. You know, she's she's up front. She's like, you know, she's using us, and she tells us up front that she is. She makes no protestations of friendliness. She doesn't pretend to be our ally or our friend. She just straight up is using us. We are we are means to an end. And I found it refreshing because at no point do I have to. You can't betray somebody when you front load it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. <laughs> It's not betrayal. She's just told you, I'm going to get what I want. And if you, you schmucks are going to help me get there, that's it. So I, I, I kind of, I definitely want to see Ashar again for that. And many other reasons. I thought Ashar's presence in that expansion was, it did nothing but help. It was perfect. Yeah. Like, yeah, and quite frankly, it, Sylvanas as a character, I felt like they've, they've put a ton of like work on her and I, I have nothing but respect for, um, Oh, bloody heck, I can't remember her name. The 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 voice actress. Um, Patty Matson. Thank you, Patty Matson. I have nothing but respect for Patty Matson's like very nuanced performance as Sylvanas. She's done a lot with the material. But in the end, Sylvanas was a character who kept having to run away. It was exactly the same problem that the Lich King had. Uh, he kept having to leave. Like he'd show up, he'd do something evil, and then he'd leave. And people got got sick of it. Like, you know, could you just stand still? We can get this over with right now. We don't know. We don't have to go to Ice Crown Citadel. We can fight right here. Oh, no, he's leaving. All right. Well, you know, we'll see him at Ice Crown, I guess. So, okay, we're at Ice Crown. Oh, but it's a five-player dungeon, so we're going to have to run from him because he's unkillable. Okay. Uh, and I feel like that happened a bit with Sylvanas where, you know, she kept showing up, doing something, and then leaving. Like, I, I think I got really bad with the Taronda situation. Mm-hmm where Tyrande basically has her on the ropes for an entire fight. And then she just kind of like nopes out and you're like, what? Like, why couldn't this have happened during the raid then if you were going to do this? So we could actually see the, the climactic fight. I think that's a problem. And I think that's one of the reasons that Ashara was so welcome was that she didn't, you know, we did get to beat her down, but it was exactly what she was expecting. You know, there's, there's a lot of nuance to it that I liked about her, but yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to fight the Primus. Um, I kind of don't want to. And he's kind of like my grumpy undead whatever. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say dad, but you know, your 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 uncle that, you know, comes home and he brings presents that your parents don't want you to have, like for <laughs> instance a gigantic magical hat that makes you completely immune to domination magic. Um and I, I think it's writing Oh, go ahead. I was going to say I also think it's interesting that he was originally supposed to be the model that was going to be used for the jailer. Yeah. Or if they just use that model to like, you know, hey, we got this model done, we'll just use this one. Also possible, but yeah. But regardless, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Quite frankly, the fight I want the most from the fallout of all of this expansion is Helia showing up again. Yes. I want to see Helia and Odin go down again. Uh, and quite frankly, I'd be rooting for, for Helia because, oh my, oh my word, am I sick of Odin. Odin is just the worst. He's literally everything people used to say about Malfurion. <laughs> Remember how we were talking about how Malfurion was the worst? At least Malfurion wasn't this jerk who killed his own daughter and turned her into a like undead monstrosity. Um, uh, you know, Helia, Helia has a lot of reason to be angry. She oh, has yeah. plenty of reason to want revenge. It seems pretty fair, really. Honestly, I, I I would straight up like to watch that fight. I I would sit there with popcorn and when Odin asked me to prove my <laughs> worthiness, I'd be like, no thanks, man. I guess I'm just unworthy. Oh, well, you handle it. I'm sure you can take her, right, buddy? So... <laughs> But I guess that pretty much answers this one. So, uh, Liz, if you want to read the next one. And if you don't, I guess Joe will have to read it. <laughs> uh, Shad Shadana asks, 
Question for Blizzard Watch Podcast. It's been a while. I actually have not played in a year, and my previous record of not playing was one a month at the end of Mists of Pandaria. So I'm kind of lost as to what to do in retail to catch up. I know I have to complete the Chains of Domination quest line and get my rep or bond or whatever it's called called up with the Kyrians. What else should I focus on? My eye level is 200, and I am no longer worried about raids or Mythic Plus. Second question. With the announcement of Blizz, that Blizz will discuss the future of World of Warcraft in April, does that feel... Actually, we should probably answer one of these first and then yeah, move on. Yeah, yeah. Go with the first one, then yeah, do the I, second one. I started reading it, and then I'm like, no, this is a totally different question. Let's take a break. Um, Really, I would just say do the story quests and progress through them. That's That's your main focus. And as you do those, you will be earning tons of renown to work your way up with the Kyrians or whatever covenant you choose. I mean, yeah, keep just, in mind that covenants are a lot easier to switch now. Yes, they are. You can really switch at will. You may need to be level max level and you may need to be maxed for down with your first covenant before you can start switching around. But it's not hard once you hit that point. Yeah, they, they really throw just, renown at you. Yeah, just follow the story quest and follow your covenant quest because each covenant has a specific quest line. Uh, so follow the breadcrumbs, really. Yeah. And once you do hit max level, or if you do care about progression and things, there are ways to catch up in gear. Once you finish all the story quests, you'll eventually find your way to Xerath Mortis, which is the best place to be playing right now, because it's uh, it's got good gear drops, it's got all sorts of things to get you up to speed, get you up to current gear levels. So... If you're interested in progression, if you start being interested in progression, you should just zoom through those story quests, get to Xerath Mortis, and just do your dailies, kill rares, do whatever you enjoy over there. But that's, yeah, that's Zareth, really all I got. Xerath Mortis is actually pretty easy to get into, too. Um, it, I think when you get to uh, Orbos, you'll get a, if you're, if you're ready to do it, you'll get a breadcrumb quest that basically tells you to go talk to the Primus. He says, by the way, I'm evil and I'm plotting against you. But then he sends Look you at my Zareth shiny Mortis. hat. <laughs> yeah. But he sends you to Zareth Mortis, and then there's a, a campaign story as stuff unfolds there that will lead you through it. You know, all you need to do is do the quests. I do will take think- you through it. And I you do don't, think you have to unlock Corthia first, don't I, you? Yeah, don't, that's why Chains of Domination is the thing. I don't know if you do. I was under the impression you do. I might be wrong. If I am, I apologize for giving you bad information. I would, I would, I, I'd like somebody who freshly hit levels. It, it's hard for us, and because I like yeah. we we've already done it on at least a main. So like, I'm not sure anybody who's been anybody who's listening who freshly hit max level. Do you get the breadcrumb right away? Because I know. I know when I got a character to max level on another server, my Alliance character, I was able to immediately skip to Corthia because it was the current content. I didn't have to do anything before it. It literally just threw Corthia at me. So yeah, I don't know. I think, if- you need, I think you need that before you can do Xerath Mortis. Worth checking into, though. Just somebody let us know, essentially. I'm curious. Sorry. No, that's fine. Do you want to move on to the second question, Liz? Oh, yeah. More reading. Okay. Second question, with the announcement that Blizz will discuss the future of World of Warcraft in April, does that feel different than the usual, we will unveil the next expansion statement? Am I playing with semantics too much, or do you think their statement is intentionally vague for a reason? What's the reason? WoW 2.0? WoW Mobile plus an expansion? Um, I personally think that it's much more likely to be the second thing you listed, and in fact, it might be more than that even. Mm -hmm. Uh, When they say they're talking about the future of World of Warcraft, uh, I think they're definitely going to announce an expansion. I I see no way that that's not going to happen. Um, There will be be another expansion. Uh, The WoW mobile game, we know they are going to announce it. They have said so. Uh, Liz talked last last podcast. Liz talked about how it's kind of weird that we live in an age where where announcements get announcements. Yeah. Uh, But I think in this case, the reason they're doing it this way is because they're going to have at least two things and possibly more things to talk about because they've talked about wanting to do more, more than just the, the mobile game is not the, the end of what they're going to be doing with world of Warcraft besides world of Warcraft. They want to do other stuff with the Warcraft, game, uh, line. especially as we know that when, when Microsoft was talking about their acquisition of Activision Blizzard, they put five or six, I think it was five games up. Five and yeah. four. Four of them were Blizzard games, and one right. of them was World of Warcraft. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was. I remember Starcraft, Hearthstone, 
World of Warcraft and Diablo all got mentions. And then so Call of four. Duty was up there. Yeah, and Call of Duty and Candy Crush. Yep. Got so six. Six and four of them were Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, World of Warcraft is... I won't, I won't say it's too big to fail. Obviously, it can fail. Obviously, it can have a disappointing expansion. It can also... But there's no way they're going to, to cut that line until the, it's not profitable. As long as it's making a profit, it will continue. Um, and it has been making profit. Like every... you know. I think we didn't, did they not have Overwatch? They must have had Overwatch. They did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. Oh, oh, oh! And Liz, we forgot to mention that in our news top new top news thing, we forgot to mention the Overwatch uh, two PvP beta. Uh, yeah, the Overwatch two beta. We knew we knew it was coming, but now we know it is coming on April the twenty sixth. So there's kind of a lot coming last half yeah. of April. That'll go along with this thing. Uh, we don't know what exactly is going to be announced on the 19th. Uh, I would put money on at least the, the two things you mentioned. There might be more. We don't let me know. Let me prod in here and say Blizzard did specifically say they were going to announce the mobile game in May. Yeah. Wait, was it May or March? But I think it was in May. Because they haven't said anything about March. May. In, it is May. March. Yeah. So... It's the reason that they're talking about the future of World of Warcraft is that they might mention more about it at that time to, to lead into the announcement of it in the next month. We don't know. Uh, but I am curious what you guys think. Uh, I've been talking a bit here. So, Joe? Uh, yeah, I, I also wondering if there's going to be some road mapping being laid out as well. So, I, like, I agree with everything you guys said, but I'm, I'm curious, too, if we're going to start to see a shift in, like, how things are presented as far as like content updates go and if they're going to start talking about what the plan is moving forward because with the acquisition uh to to microsoft now that may change now I remember at one point in time they were trying to target one expansion every year and a half uh and then that changed to every two years and then that changed to whenever they can get it out um but i'm wondering if sh the last few expansions have started to kind of give them more of an idea of how to hone in on content releases in a meaningful way, because like Shadowlands, I personally don't feel that there's been like a massive, like drought drought. There's been like a little bit of a lull, but there's still a lot to do versus like, let's, uh, what was it? The, uh, the siege of Orgrimmar patch, which lasted itself almost two years. Right. Like they seem to be getting better in the last several expansions of like how they release stuff. So they might be announcing like, here's our game plan going forward for the future of WoW. I saw somebody speculate that maybe they're going to announce like a free to play model. That ain't going to happen. Let's just be flat out. And and this goes back to the WoW 2.0 stuff. As long as WoW is making money with a subscription service, it ain't going free to play. There's there's no benefit to it while people are willing to pay for it. Um, but yeah, I I. I would watch for that person. I would watch to see if we start getting of like, Hey, every six months we're going to have something release or something happen and, or, or every four months and then every eight months, it'll be a major thing and et cetera, et cetera. And kind of figure out their new cadence from that. So that might be something they talk about. I think one thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of blizzard teams are starting to do stuff on a really regular schedule. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Diablo four has really specific quarterly updates. You know, you know, every quarter you're getting an update and usually they post the update is coming soon. Uh, the update, you know, you know, you know, specifically you're getting that information. And I think that's been really good for Diablo because like compare Diablo to Overwatch two, Overwatch two has been really quiet and you get fans really hungry for information. And, you know, they start coming up with crazy theories and they just like kind of they kind of go, uh, what am I trying to say here? You know, they kind of go a little a little nuts with, you know, what they want, what's happening and their speculation, and their conspiracy theories. And you could just go kind of every direction because there's nothing for them to focus on because there's just silence. And uh, Diablo, I think, is trying to get away from that problem by having regular updates, even when they don't have a ton to say all the time, but they have an update. And giving fans that kind of information really sets expectations. It lets all of us know, okay, this is coming. And so you aren't going to get upset, like, if there's not a patch today or there's not a patch next week. Because, you know, oh, well, they're releasing patches 
every six months. They're releasing patches every mm-hmm. quarter. Yeah. They're going to release an update this time. So when you can clearly set player expectations, you reduce player disappointment because all of us know what to expect. Yeah, I As think it, that that's like you, you're making an interesting point here because with what they're doing with like having 9.2.5 on the PTR already, it's like they're taking what they have been doing all along and codifying it. Mm-hmm. Like we're, instead of just doing it and letting people find out, they're doing it, but they're telling you that they're doing it. So well, it's interesting to look at. I'll note they haven't actually told us. It's just yeah. WoW had started data mining. The files showed well, up. But I meant if they're, if they're moving towards that model that Joe was yeah. talking about. That, yeah, yeah. But I think it, and, and from a software development standpoint, that's the dream, right? Like we, I talked to, I used to talk about this a lot in the pre-shows and things like that, but anybody who has ever worked in software development, having a set schedule and cadence is the ideal. Like being able to say that we can do this for so long. That's why um, agile sprint development is so popular among like just regular software developers. It's because it's a known quantity that you can plan for point wise in a certain period of time and deliver on promises. So if they can start moving to something like that and they can stick to it, it's a win for everybody. It's a win for us as consumers of the product. It's a win for them who are actually working on it. Like I'm here for it. And I kind of like, now that we've been talking about it, I'm starting to hope that is what winds up being announced. So yeah, sorry. That's all I got. I got excited for a second. I apologize. (laughs) God forbid you actually be excited. Yeah. But I'm excited about like weird development backend stuff. Not like, (laughs) not like, ah, like this is new content. No, I'm like, this would be great. Like I'm I'm weird. I'm sorry. I'm going to be upfront. Uh, You mentioned the, the siege of Orgrimmar patch and how long it lasted. It was 18 months. Yeah. That's a long time. That is that is an enormously long time. Um, and we've had other ones. The one that really comes to mind, I remember doing a post where I compared them all. And the one at the end of, of Warlords of Draenor was almost as bad. I think it was something like 14 months. So, Which, considering that it, it was the tail end of an expansion that many people felt like had skipped an entire content patch... Putting us in in that one for 14 months, people were like not happy. If they do come up with a model that allows them to say, look, we this is how long before the next thing. But that would be helpful, I and, think. And here's some interesting tidbits that kind of go along with that. And Padilla and Chad is pointing this out, and it's something we didn't mention. They did announce that there will be a season four for Shadowlands 2. Yeah. We're in season three now. And so there is going to be a season four. And they're doing weird curveball things like you know, we talked before about the Mage Tower, the Mage Tower becoming a permanent thing. There's other things that they can work on that add content or add player like uh, quality of life content to the game that isn't na- maybe necessarily a major story thing or a major systems patch or maybe necessarily even a major content drop. But I know some people are like super excited about season four. Uh, some people are super excited about uh, the the whole uh, I just literally talked about it and my brain is blanking. I am sorry, <laughs> folks. Uh, Mage Tower? Mage Tower. Thank you. Uh, but these are things that like they seem minor, but they are a lot of work. But putting them in the game and doing the stuff at regular cadence also just helps the game longevity. It helps quality of life. Like there's a lot of really cool stuff that they can continue to work on and not have us feel like that big drought at the end of Warlords of Draenor or the, the at the end of Mist with the Siege of Orgrimmar. Like they could do a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I think this is not it may not be as like as immediately like compelling as players that you you hear, "Oh, they're going to have more regular updates." You don't you don't feel like, "Yay, what whatever." So they're going to tell me about stuff more regularly. That's great. But it actually is because what Liz was talking about with managing expectations. One of the things that World of Warcraft has been plagued by over the years is people getting attached to the idea they have about what's coming next. And then when it isn't what happens, they get mad. And that happens because there's nobody has any idea what to expect for a long period of time. Nobody... No one at the end of Battle for Azeroth knew what was going to happen for like a, a solid eight months uh, until they were the announcement of Shadowlands. And and they were like, what? What is this? So having a regular update announcement type thing, having a, a roadmap, as Joe pointed out, is, is not a bad idea. And it is interesting to consider. But okay, I think 
anything else to say on this one before we move on to the next one, which is a, actually two questions from the same person. So go <laughs> me for the good planning on my part. <laughs> Uh, Joe, I guess you're up. All right, cool. This is from our friend Lord Soth. Uh, well met, mo- uh, noble watchers of the cold weather, now owned by the tiny squishy overlord company. Uh, okay. Uh, it is I, Lord Soth, here with a stroll down Nostalgia Lane, with the level squish putting us back to 60 in an upcoming expansion that will likely push us to 70 or do some weird things to keep us at 60. I find myself contemplating the talent trees of old. Given our current level cap, is it theoretically possible to return to the old talent tree system? Uh, Okay, we're going to keep going on, but I'm going to tell you, no, no, no. Uh, My question, do you wish we would, or would you rather have it set up like it is now? One of my favorite things about the old system was it felt much more customizable to my playstyle. Optimal builds be blanked. Let me return to my dual-wheeled haste Death Knight build where I had almost halved my base attack speed pack and wrath. Uh, 1.6 cooldown axe down to 0.82. Um, there's a lot to be said about it. I know some people feel really, really strong about it. Uh, some people really want the old system back. I remember the old system, but there was a lot of bloat in the old system. And Matt and I have talked about this a lot. Matt and I have complained about this a lot, uh, both on and off the podcast. There was a lot of stuff that was just raw stats. It didn't have any meaningful play play impact. It didn't really do anything. It was just, please put five points into this. You get five more percent agility, and now you can move on to the next tier or, or something along those lines. And that's not yeah. really fun, per se. The new talents. I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I, I do feel like I, I've actually been much more strident about this than I used like, than, than I am now. Uh, there was a time where I would have like thrown myself in front of a train rather than even entertain <laughs> the conversation. But I do get why people like the old system and I, I will have more to say about it, but I'm, I'm right now, I'm just, I'm putting a pin in this so <laughs> that I can come back to it and explain what I'm thinking. I just want to let Joe and Liz talk because I'm, I'm thinking there will be stuff there that I will react to probably, but to finish my thought before I go over to Liz, uh, it's just the new system allows for, things that actually have the potential to swing your play style, I think more meaningfully. I'm not saying that all of them are very successful in that regard, but uh, as a resto shaman, I absolutely change my talents around based off of whether I want to really lean into single target healing, or if I really want to go into the, the spread healing, there's a lot of, of play in there and customization that I can do. And it doesn't take me 10 hours. The, that was the other problem with like the old system is if you wanted to go and like fix your talents or change your talents around one, originally you couldn't do it. Let's not forget that. Like back in the olden days, you were not allowed to change your talents. Then they added that in as a quality of life. It, I, as I recall, you could always change them. It was just really expensive, and it scaled each time you changed. That was them. that was after they added that in because originally yeah. in 1.0 you could not change your talents. Once they were in, they were in. It was the Diablo two talent system. Yeah. Uh, he, and then he's they, right. I remember this. And then they added respecking, limited respecking into Diablo two because that wasn't originally there either. And they added respecking into WoW in one of the earlier patches. I can't remember. It was like 1.04 or something like that. <laughs> uh, but it was one of the Early earlier. Patches. It was one of the earlier patches. Uh, but and that's when they added the scaling in. But you also were only allowed to do it at your class trainer. You couldn't do it on the fly. And you could only do it at, a, at your class trainers in the main cities. So you had to go back to a main city and find your class trainer and spend money and hope you didn't accidentally click on the wrong thing and then spend more money because you accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. I may have spent a lot of my money on this and I couldn't afford a horse for a while. <laughs> It, it was a, a very cumbersome system. The new system is a lot more fluid and a lot more forgiving. Would they rather they go back and maybe take a pass through those talents? Yes. Do I want to go back to the old system? No. Okay, I'm done. Liz. I want to go back to the old system. I hate <gasps> the system. I hate it so much. <laughs> I feel like I have no choices. I have rows of three talents. I always pick one because the others suck. This is how I feel on all the characters I play. I have no choice. I have no control over my playstyle direction. I have to play like this, and I'm never going to change my talents, and it's boring. It's boring! And this is a larger problem. This is not necessarily about how what style of talent tree we have. This is about 
making talents be meaningful choices and giving us talents that can really change our play style. And I don't feel like this does that. Uh, the classes I play the most are monks and uh, paladins right now. Oh, yeah. You and, got you got boned on the paladin side of that one. Yeah, I don't feel like I have choices. <laughs> I mean, I think I have more choices on the retribution side than I do on the holy side because you can kind of – I can kind of shift around depending on what I, whether I want to focus on single target or multi-target encounters. But for the most part, I don't feel like my talents have any meaning anymore. And when I level up, you know, we get a new expansion, I level up, I get nothing. I get nothing. I never get anything. We have no power advancement anymore, which that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing about how we are playing on a system of borrowed power and we never directly advance anymore. Mm -hmm. But what I liked about the old system that I find lacking in the new system particularly was that you could advance like there was, let's go to Paladins because I... Played a paladin a lot back in ye olden days. Um, you had your holy tree, you had your protection tree, you had your retribution tree. And you didn't just pick a tree and you were that tree forever. You could pick multiple trees. You could go down different paths in different trees. And yes, it's true that you usually wanted to get the top tier talent in one particular tree, so you would invest all of your points there, but not necessarily. You could decide to go down another tree and there were different builds that hybridized you in different ways. And um, for example, my paladin back in the day was a holy protection paladin, which was not, that was not the recommended build. The recommended build was to go holy and retribution. So you had, you know, a tiny, tiny bit of DPS you could get out there and you'd had, it was easier to go soloing. But uh, I went holy protection, which gave me a ton of defense it let me get Blessing of Kings, which not all paladins had and was a really good blessing. And I really enjoyed that, that I got to choose, okay, I'm going to play this really defensive healing paladin instead of I'm going to play this, this more aggressive paladin. And I feel like now we pick a spec and the spec is very tightly contained. And I see ways in which that is good in that you can start the game and click on your spec, and you're just, you're immediately this spec. You have this identity, but it allows less hybridization. You can't kind of combine things in interesting new ways. And of course, even then, there were cookie cutter builds that most people stuck with, but I think you had this opportunity to combine things in different ways that you don't have anymore. Um, and I get what y'all are saying. You say that each talent point didn't have a lot of meaning, but... Uh, you know, I feel right now they don't have much meaning either. You pick a talent and that's your talent for life. Um, and it's different for different classes. And it's tough to balance that. Which talent is mechanically better? Which talent is more interesting? It's hard to make that balance. But mostly I feel like you can't hybridize your build. You can't customize your build. Every holy paladin has these talents and these are the talents you're going to select from. And you're only going to select these because these are the right ones, the good ones to pick. So I feel I have less control over how I build my character and I don't have any talents. It, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't uh, be any different playing if I didn't have a talent tree at all right now. That would not change my play style very much. So yeah, I just, I want choice. I want agency. I want the ability to customize my character and play style the way I want to play. And I feel like I have one choice and that's picking a specialization and that's it. Choices are over now it, and choices are never going to change. I think they never, I think that cool. feeds into what I was uh, sorry, Matt. I think that feeds into what I was saying. They, they need to go back over the, uh, the talents, right? Here's my, here's my thing on this. Yeah. Um, first, first thing there were never, there were never any of these original talent trees for demon hunters mm -hmm. or yeah. monks. So you would have or to death knights. Them. Well, yeah, no, death knights. Well, would be death, knights kinda, yeah. death knights had one. Um, so, so that's that's the first thing to keep in mind. You would have to actually design them, uh, and and I don't think, I I don't think going back to the exact talent trees we had before no. would work. No, definitely what, not. What you want to do is design a new talent system that that took some of the ideas behind the original talent system to heart, while also using the lessons they've learned to design a new one. So things like 
five points to get cruelty. Like, see, part of the problem here is that we're talking about a system that has to work for classes like paladins that are true hybrids. Mm -hmm. The paladins can do a lot. They can heal. They can tank. They can DPS. They're not quite druids, but they're pretty close. They are the plate equivalent of druids. <laughs> um, whereas, look at you know, death knights or warriors. Death knights and warriors have a tanking spec and two DPS specs apiece. And those DPS specs feel different, but they are functionally the same in that they attack the roughly the same way. They have different special effects, basically. They don't get hybridization the same way that a paladin does. Back in the day when I played, like, I, when I played in vanilla and I was tanking, uh, I didn't tank as a tank. I didn't tank as prot. I had a 31515 build mm -hmm. um, that I used when I was tanking. And then if I was going to be DPS in a raid, I was either use a 3120 build or I would use uh, a, a 1520. Like there was, there was a really messed up fury build I would use sometimes that they gave me like, you know, two handed slam. And those were the, the, the builds I used and I never varied from them. So the things Liz is saying about how she feels about talents now, that's how I felt about talents then. <laughs> that's exactly how talents were for me. I never, all I did was, oh, I got to go back into town and spend a lot of gold to change my spec so I can off tank this one fight. Uh, oh, nope. I got to go back to town and spend a lot of gold to, to change my spec so I can main tank for Nefarian. But, you know, up till now, you guys have needed me as DPS. So that kind of thing. So you don't want that. You, you don't want to bring back the system exactly as it was. It would not work. There'd be too much you'd have to do to, to try and jigger it in. But at the same time, it's fair to say that for some classes, the, the things Liz is saying are, are really good critiques of the modern talent system. And that's why I think what you need to do is actually look at how you want talent progression to work. Does, should taking a talent choice, how meaningful do you want it to be? How, how meaningful should it be? Having a tree, like one of the things that we have where you have each level of the, of the talent thing is basically just a bar with three options. And those options stop when you make that choice. Like at level 15, you pick one of three talents. That doesn't affect your next talent choice. But that's the thing that I liked about the classic system. That's the one thing I thought was cool about the classic system was you picked a direction to aim your character. There was a talent you were yeah. going for. Uh, let's, I'll use the example of like the best talent ever designed for World of Warcraft ever. Uh, Wrath of the Lich King's uh, Titan's Grip. Because it was, a ch it was a dynamic change to how you played your character. It didn't add any button you had to hit. It didn't add anything you had to put on a bar. It just changed how you played the character. Uh, the second best talent ever invented for World of Warcraft was Gladiator Stance, which did the same thing. These are talents that were transformative, but the difference between Titan's Grip and Gladiator Stance was that to get Titan's Grip, you made choices. And those choices led you down the path to get that thing. We were, you were talking about your hybrid um, Holy slash Prot Paladin. Yeah. I, in my experience, there were, we had a lot of holy slash prop paladins, so it mm. wasn't. Oh yeah, but, no, that was that was but, the but, thing. But, every, but it comes different places, different ways. My point being, though, there's like I remember warriors who would go just far enough down fury to to maximize their two handed fighting, the, their mm -hmm. dual weapons, and then they'd go get mortal strike. It was mathematically inferior in every single way to a fury warrior. It was never going to put out the damage that a Fury Warrior did. But I know a lot of Warriors who liked doing it because they liked Mortal Strikes debuff. They didn't mind not being top DPS and or like, you know, being a real threat in PvP if they could use the, the idea that they wanted, that they had in their head for their character and still have the ability they wanted. Because his Mortal Strike was just plain, you know, more utility. Putting a healing debuff on things was a big deal back then. If you think about Mortal Strike Warriors, we, we actually used them in Blackwing Lair just to keep the dragons from healing. Like, we didn't use them to... De their damage output wasn't important. It was keeping Ebon Rock and Flame Gore from healing up when they put the curse on the tank. You'd have people Mortal Striking them constantly. I had to switch to a Mortal Strike build to main tank him because they absolutely had to keep that debuff on him to keep him from healing to full and just making the fight take 25 minutes to wipe. There's 
there's something to be said for a talent system where you make a choice at level five or level 15 or what have you, and that choice influences where you go next. That's the part of the original talent system that I used to, I used to completely dismiss, and now I think that is something important that should be preserved. But at the same time, I don't ever want to see the return of <laughs> like like having to go 41 points in the talent tree to get that thing. So you spend 10 points on, you know, I spent five points on more crit, uh, five points on haste. No talents that are just ticking a box up to five to get you the next level of the talent tree. No, we should never have that again, but we should have like, let's look at like modern, like right now, let's look at the, like the, the, the ret paladins choices. A red paladin takes, you know, certain talents, and those talents are exclusive only on one level. They take, like, say, the 15-point talents. They're exclusive only between those three choices. You can, t- you can, th- when you look at the next level, you there's three more, and you get to pick those one of those three. And there's nothing connecting your choice at level 15 to your choice at level 30 or your choice at level 45. You know, that to me is why Rhett Paladins feel so disjointed. Because, no, you know, two, two Rhett Paladins, they can take a different, like their first tier of talent, they can take a different one, but they're all going to take, you know, Avenger, they're going to take the one that buffs, uh, what's the, uh, the one that buffs your, your you know, big-ass smite. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. I can't uh, remember yeah. the name of it. it there's Righteous that one hurt. talent. Yeah, you're going to take that one. But imagine if in order to take that one, you had to pick something else. There was a connection and there might be a reason why you wouldn't want to invest that because you want to get down the tree to this talent, which is also really good, but it's not on the same track. That flexibility, that's something that I do think World of Warcraft is poorer for having lost. There's a lot of good things about the current talent system. I like the good talent, the current talent system. I like it more than the previous talent system, but I understand why people are unhappy with it because there's nothing. I make a decision and that decision has no ramifications. It just adds numbers to my, you know, some classes have competitive talent choices and some do not, but there's no connection between them. Even if they don't, if they do have competitive talent choices, it's still just between these three, which one do you want? And before it was, okay, I'm looking at these three talent trees. I can see ways to connect this up. Like, like I said, I, sometimes I had a 31, five fifteen build. Sometimes I had a 31, 20 build. And the fact that those builds are different means that there's an aspect of choice to them that is not present in the current system. That's my long-winded, but I wanted to wait for you guys to say your thing before I did it, thinking about talents as I currently think about them. I think it would be a good idea for the next expansion to completely revamp talents because you could add back in that feeling of character progression through leveling. That is something that we kind of lose nowadays. Like Around level 40, that feeling is gone. You do not feel like you're progressing through leveling it, and I think that that is something you should feel. That that's going to be it for me. Tangent tangent question then, real quick for you guys, because I'm kind of thinking about it. Let's say that they do revamp the talent system. Do you want them to revamp it in such a way that, like next expansion, they that it has some form of built in, uh, I don't want to say leveling mechanic, but reward system for time spent in it, uh, or do you want us to still like? go up a certain number of levels and have it fed into that? Or do you want to stay at like level 16, have them figure out something else and have it feed that system, that new talent system sort of feed into it and feed into that experience. I can't answer that question because I'm not quite sure what you mean. Like, um, cause part of Lord, Lord Sauce question here is like, you, like if we're not going from 60 to 70, what do you do? Right. Do you introduce another system that sort of gives you that same leveling reward and should, and my question is, should it be that talent system? Should there be something in there that just, maybe it's not tied with leveling. Maybe it's tied for like in-game achievement or something else. See, I think they sh- the, the problem is, is that every time they try and do something where it's not based in leveling, it basically just turns into a leveling system by another name. Uh, if you look at what they did in Shadowlands or what they did in Battle for Azeroth, you basically had a, con- a concurrent leveling system that you had while you were leveling, especially with art with with Azerite armor. You were leveling up to like level 120, 
And as you leveled to 120, you were also leveling your Azerite, which then you continued to level after you hit 120. So you were just leveling while you leveled. Dog, I heard you liked leveling, so you can level while you <laughs> level. Was what, was what all these systems end up turning into. It's You are leveling. You're just doing it with a different name. Renown is levels. You are leveling your renown. Mm -hmm. It's just leveling. You are leveling again. All of these systems just try to put the leveling back behind something so you don't think about the fact that that's what you're doing. Essentially, instead of being level 130 in Shadowlands, you are level 60 with an asterisk because then you also have like 80 renown levels. It's, it's kind of a Paragon system, but it doesn't want to come out and be a Paragon system <laughs> because then we get to the next expansion. And, you know, it's if you look at the way Diablo 3 did it, where you basically got 10 more levels and but if you'd earn a bunch of Paragon, you those ten levels were levels, not Paragon levels, and people got like, "What is this? Why are you doing it?" So they've tried to conceal it, and I think that that is a mistake. I think at this point we should go from sixty to seventy. We should get some new talents. I don't know how the new system should work. I I, I freely admit that the people at Blizzard who do game design are a heck of a lot better than me at this kind of thing, <laughs> but. If I were going to do it, if you said, Matt, how would you do it? I would have, you'd get like a level choice, say every five levels. And that level choice, you'd, you'd pick a level, pick a talent, and that talent would open up other talents. If you want to see what I would do, go look at what they're talking about doing in Diablo 4. Because that system looks so compelling to me. And it's, it's more complex than I can explain here, but it does exactly what Liz is talking about in terms of giving you meaningful choice while also preventing you from taking a bunch of stuff just to take, to fill up points. Cause, Cause that's the thing you don't want. You absolutely don't want that in my opinion. And Liz, what about you? Um, can I ask what y'all think about the trees for your soul binds? What kind of opinions do y'all have on those? Because that's something that's similar to a talent tree in that you choose different paths and you choose different powers you want to use in this tree, but it doesn't have any of that like, oh, I need to put five points here just to get to the next tier. It's like you, you pick your path and as you level, you can pick go farther down that path. I like it personally. Hmm. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the sphere system from Final Fantasy X, uh, just more streamlined. It reminds me of the Horizon uh, system in mm -hmm. uh, Forbidden West, which I really, really like, and I think does a lot of the same things. I I think it's a good thing. I like Path of the Titans. I'm going to go ahead and say it like that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing, though. That is, I mean, talking about other games here, I mean, we've, we're kind of at the must-be-done-soon point, unfortunately, but I will say that playing other games, like playing Cyberpunk when they did the, the, the 1.5 revamp, I like that there's spending points in a tree unlocks other things you can get. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go exactly from a to B mm -hmm. like, you don't, the talents aren't locked together that way. But if you want to get the really powerful talents, you have to go somewhere. You have to like invest a certain amount of points. There's different ways it can work. I think the soul binds one, my problem with soul binds ones was again, it, it's leveling disguise. Yeah. Yeah. And, but if it were actually the leveling system, then I would not have a problem with it. I actually kind of like it. Uh, but then again, I mean, I'm the guy that the only thing I didn't like about the original artifact system <laughs> was that you ultimately had no choice. Yeah. Because you just were going to get enough points to buy everything. So they might as well have just let you buy everything because you're yeah. going to do it. You, there should be choices. You should have to make decisions. You shouldn't be able to get everything. Uh, but your choices should give you things. Like if you pick something, they should be compelling things. Yeah. And that's why I like the Diablo four system that we've seen so far, because mm -hmm. when you pick something, you get something and you make a choice, you shape your character in a direction. I do think that there's, there was a lot of merit to the original system considering I, I, I'm going to just talk about this really fast, but then we, you know, we should probably move on, but JL and Brack that his original job when he came to World of Warcraft, when he when he started working at Blizzard, they literally hired him to come to come up with a talent system for it. Yeah, something better. Because it didn't it didn't have one. Not to mention of nothing better. They had no talents when they hired him. They were not in the game. 
Well, they kind they kind of no. were using the Diablo thing as a placeholder oh, no, during the early early stuff. Yeah, but that's that's what they hired him to do was make a coherent talent system out of it. And he didn't have a lot of time. He only had a few months. It is amazing that World of Warcraft's talent system was as good as it was when it came out, considering that the guy built it in five months on the on the bones of Diablo, and he straight up did. If you know, that, oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, but. I think it's time to basically not to go back. That's the thing. I don't want to encourage going back and just doing the same thing, but definitely learn from what made people like that system. And Liz has done, done the service to you guys at Blizzard. She's laid out why she liked it. That's the kind of thing that you should be looking at. Not, not to just ape it, not to just make it a copy, but that thing she just said about, getting choice about feeling like she gets to have agency in her character. That is something that the current talent system does not provide everyone. Uh, and I think it is one of the things that should. So th- that's going to be me. I'm, 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 I think I've talked this topic to death. <laughs> I, I want to add one thing and we're kind of very right at the end of our time or over our time. I just want to say we've gone several expansions without Blizzard really rethinking the talent system because Mm -hmm. we haven't expanded the talent system as we've advanced. We've had these borrowed power systems that have served as kind of alternate power advancement systems, alternate leveling systems. And they all come in, they come in and they exist for an expansion and then they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of, you have your power advancement for this expansion, then it goes away. But I think because we've had all of these borrowed power, these, expansion-specific power systems, Blizzard hasn't kind of gone back to the core and really rethought how talents work. They haven't thought really hard about how this system works, how this leveling system works, how this advancement system works, what talents feel good, what talents feel bad, because every expansion, they're not looking at talents. They're looking at a shiny new system that's totally different from whatever we were doing last expansion. You know, every expansion, they're creating this new system, and sometimes they're kind of reinventing the wheel. They may go back to old things like Path of the Titans. They may pull back on old ideas, but it's like for several expansions now, it's like we have a new power system every expansion, and we haven't gone back and looked about, okay, what about the talent system? What about the basic core talent system? Is it serving the game well? Is it serving the players well? Is it fun? Could it be better? And we haven't taken the time to think about that because we have a totally different power system every expansion. So I don't think it gets the dev time or attention because we're all doing something else. We've got something new and shiny. And so maybe it's time to go back and really rethink talents and how they work and how they could work. Yeah, I, at this point, I'm going to stop this discussion because, my God, we can keep going. But I definitely yeah, think that's a, that's a good place to end it. Uh, the idea of like reevaluating what's fun. But uh, Joe, if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means this podcast site and community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcasts, a better chance at having your question answered on our podcasts or the queue, and an ads-free site experience. Uh, thank you, Joe, and thank you also to Liz for being here. Um, this has been the Blizzard Watch podcast. If you've got a question for the podcast, please send it to podcast at blizzardwatch.com if you feel like you send us an email, or go to our Discord server and hit up either our patron Q and podcast questions channel or our Q and podcast questions channel for non patrons and ask your question there. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. Uh, this has been the Blizzard Watch podcast, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>